Hey, hi, how are you everybody? I'm so glad to see you guys today. Um, today we're going to just have a chatty video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Around here we talk about creativity, motherhood, chronic illness. Really what I focus on is being creatively fulfilled in motherhood and chronic illness because I believe even with chronic illness, we can still have fulfilled lives. We can still be creative, run businesses and ministries, and that's what I'm all about. So um, today I wanted to do a chatty video. If you watched, not watched, if you read this week's blog post, I talked about being creative and running a business as a mom with chronic illness. And I really wanted to come on here and talk to other moms who are struggling because they feel like they can't um, be creative or they can't contribute to their families or they're overwhelmed and tired all the time. And what does it look like to get the most of our creativity or our work hours with limited amount of spoons? So mostly talking to the moms who are starting their own businesses or already running their own businesses or ministries or those who want to start them. But these tips can really help anybody in any working environment that is struggling with their spoon reserves or their energy reserves, right? You, The spoon theory says, you know, everyone has a certain amount of spoons and every task takes an amount of spoons. And um, for those of us that have chronic illness, we already have less spoons than other people. And so I have really been thinking about this because a lot of things have been happening over the last few weeks and um, I wanted to talk about getting the most out of our creativity, getting the most out of our working hours, our business time and what that looks like. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about identity and comparison and all of that that goes into this experience that we have. If you like videos about um, creativity and fulfillment, if you are a mom with chronic illness, this is the place for you. Um, I also do draw with me while we chat videos as I'm getting back into the hobby of being artistic. I'm also an author, so a lot of my creativity around here is centered on writing books uh, because I write fiction and nonfiction. Um, and I am the owner of Soul Cadence Coaching, the business behind the channel that you're watching right now. So that's what we do around here. We're all about creativity and fulfillment despite chronic illness. Um, and so I wanted to talk to you about some things that you can actually do. These are things that are in your control that you can do to feel more fulfilled, to get the most out of your creativity. And, um, if you have been to the blog recently, the, po the link will be below, or if you've been around this channel the last couple of weeks, because I've started to do a lot more around here, then you'll notice like I've done a reintroduction. I've shared some of my health issues. If you want to see the chronic illness tag video, I'm going to link that below. That'll tell you all about my health issues, how it affects my writing and my schedule and all of that. Um, and I've been dealing with these issues for all my life. Not all of them. Some of them are some that I've developed in adulthood. But um, in the past three and a half years, my life has changed drastically. I got married. I had two babies back to back. Um, we got pregnant three months into the marriage and had two babies back to back. We've been married almost... We've been married three and a half years now. So... Um, I was diagnosed with a previously undiagnosed personality disorder, as well as developed some new chronic health issues along with the ones that I've had since childhood. It's been a lot. And it's a lot that my husband and I did not plan to have happen in these early years of our marriage. But we're learning how to make a rhythm that works for us, that works for my energy levels, that works for our family. As we've recently moved to the West Coast, to the Pacific Northwest, to plant a church. We've been, that's been our dream since we were dating. And I also have this business. And so we ask ourselves, well, how can you do it all when you have chronic illness, when you have flare days, when you are in pain every day? Um, 
And that's what I want to talk to you about today because there are certain things that are within our control that aren't going to make every day perfect. You're never going to have a perfect life. Even able-bodied, healthy people don't have perfect lives. That's just not the way it works. But these are things within your control so that you can start to take back your creativity so that you can build your business or ministry with using limited amount of spoons on certain days. Um, And so I'm going to give you six tips to kind of help you do that and talk to you about some things that I shared, some examples from the blog this week. Um, But the first one is to shift your expectations. So a lot of us had a life before chronic illness. Some of us have had chronic illnesses since childhood, like me with my migraines, but a lot of us had a life before chronic illness. Now, even with my migraines and my PMDD, I really thought like I pushed through. I, I'll figure it out. We will just work around these few days. I It'll be fine. But I had a life. I had dreams. I had plans and expectations before the back-to-back pregnancies, the postpartum depression, and then the adulthood diagnoses. And if I was going to keep living life the way I had been living, I would never... I would run myself into the ground essentially because my pain levels are so high. My exhaustion levels are so high from the fibromyalgia and what I suspect is also more along the lines of CF, but, um, CFS, not CF, but CFS, which I don't know yet, but, um, that's where I'm at. And I realized I have to change expectations. I have to change my expectations of, what motherhood looks like. I have to change my expectations of what my business looks like. I have to change my expectations of what creating content, writing books, marketing looks like. When we shift our expectations to really match ourselves, we get a lot better at meeting those expectations. We get a lot better at meeting those goals. So the first thing we have to do is shift our expectations. The second thing goes along with the first, so that's know your limits. So in order to shift our expectations, we have to know our limits. Some of us have um, less limits than others, and each of us has different limits. What I am able to do might be something completely different than what you're able to do. If you've watched the recent video or read the blog post about my interview with um, Rachel Ellis, which by the way, she met her goal. Woohoo, I'm so excited. Um, so thank you to any of you who saw that video and went. But some of the projects she does with the sewing and the things that she does for History and Skirts, I could not do it. Um, and vice versa. Some of the things that I do, maybe she wouldn't be as comfortable doing them. We have to know our individual limits. So when I have, um, women, um, in the membership, I run a membership for moms with chronic illness. When I have women in the membership and we're going through this, I don't tell them all what their limits are. I let them tell me because you have to figure that out for yourself. Is going on a hike going to leave you in bed for four days after that? Is taking your kids to the zoo going to lay you up for two or three days after? And if so, how do we work around those limits and how do we use that as part of our expectations? So number one, shift your expectations. Number two, know your limits so you can appropriately shift your expectations. And knowing our limits is also the amount of brain power we can put towards something. If we're going to work one day, can we also cook dinner? If not, do we have a partner who could cook dinner? If we are going to have a day full of meetings with clients, do we need the next two days to just do office work and rest? Know your limits and shift your expectations. That's going to help you immensely with running a business or ministry or being able to practice your creative hobby and outlet. Number three is have a plan. So, This is one that I am still working on and it's having a plan. Have a plan for how you're gonna run that business or ministry. Have a plan for who's your point person, who's your B person that helps you out with stuff. Have a plan for the days that you have to work, who's taking care of your kids or um, things like that. 
So for me, I teach all day Friday on OutSchool. I teach, um, it's wonderful because running a creative education business, I kind of get to set my own hours, but that's the day where I work all day and my husband is home being a dad. Um, and I kind of have to fight through if I have a headache or anything like that because um, if I have a flare-up because I do need to work those hours. It's consistent income throughout the month, but also I have to actually physically show up for that. And by physically, I mean in front of my Zoom uh, because it's online teaching. And so we have that worked out. That's part of our plan. Now we're shifting our plan as he's starting new jobs and new opportunities here in the Pacific Northwest. Our plan is shifting and we're coming up for with a rhythm that works for our life which I have a whole module on rhythm in the membership, the Soul Cadence Village membership. Um, it's going to be in there and you're going to hear more about that in the coming month um, because I'm about to do a big thing. But in the membership, I do have a module on rhythm and I can't go into it in this video, but your rhythm is just about what works for your family. And this plan isn't about having a schedule or a strict routine. It's not meant to keep you from being flexible. This is actually a rhythm that's supposed to make you, not make you, but help you work with your body's needs, help you work with your mental health needs. This plan is one that is easy for you and your family to follow so that you can be creative and have a hobby or a business or a ministry and do things that you love so that you can feel more alive. When we feel like we're not contributing, when we feel like we're, we're a burden, it can be hard for us to feel fulfilled. And this is one way we can help ourselves do that. So number one, shift our expectations. Number two, know your limits. Number three, have a plan. And number four, take advantage of energy bursts, um, but do so wisely. So an example of this is, a few days ago, uh, my husband had taken the, or my husband had gone to work. I, we had put the kids down for their nap and I felt a little more energized and I knew I had to film one video. Um, and so I filmed that video. And then when I was done, I thought, well, I have enough in me to do another 20 minute video. So I just cranked it out. I already, it's not that I was like, oh, let me throw it together. I already had it planned out. I already had I already had what I was going to say, just like I have my notes here to the side. So I already have my content planned out. It's just a matter of creating it. And with video, that's a little harder. So while I was there in that time, I just made another video. I had time after that. I could have made a third one, but I did not have the mental capacity or the energy to make that third video. So everyone's talking about batch create content and do this and stuff. For those of us with limited spoons, we have to do that wisely. So if you're going to batch create, plan it as part of your plan, or if you have an energy burst, use that energy wisely. Gauge yourself during that energy burst and, and put it to good use. Put it to, if you're wanting to do a hobby and you feel that little surge, do a little bit of work on that hobby. If it's sewing, do a little bit of your sewing project. If it's knitting, do a little bit of your knitting project. If it's writing, write a couple paragraphs or a chapter or whatever you have the energy for. Take advantage of those energy bursts, but do it wisely. Because when we don't do it wisely, what happens is we get a kickback from it. It's We get that recoil where now we have to recover from what we did in the energy burst. So don't go clean your whole house top to bottom when you have a burst of energy, because that's gonna lay you out. But if you get an energy burst and you've done something for your business and you're like, well, I have this list of things that I need to do at home, pick one of those things and do it. Maybe it's putting dishes in the dishwasher, putting laundry in the washing machine, putting laundry in the dryer. Pick one of those things and then gauge your energy level wisely. Do you have enough energy now to sweep the floor? If not, let it wait until you've rested a little bit. Do you have energy to whatever it is? And this has to really be taken into consideration for those of us with young, young children. Because today, an example today, my I do have more energy today. 
and my daughter wouldn't nap. Well, I can't really film when my daughter's not napping. So I had to gauge. I needed my energy to spend time with her while she missed her morning nap and, well, early afternoon nap with her brother. And so I had a kid up with me the whole time. Um, So my husband came home a little early so I could do some filming today. Um, But with that energy burst, I couldn't put it towards filming. So I did some extra work on the side and then I just played with my kids. I used that energy to snuggle with them, watch their TV shows, play Tickle Monster, you know, whatever it was, hanging out with my kids. And that bonding is really important. So use your energy burst to your advantage, but do so wisely. So number one, shift expectations. Number two, know your limits. Number three, have a plan. Number four, use energy bursts wisely. And number five, utilize tools, cheats, accessibility resources. Utilize your space in a way that helps you. What I mean by that is set up your space to where you get to do things the easiest way possible. When we have chronic health issues, whether it's mental health or physical health, we like the path of least resistance. For me, when it comes to our kitchen, we don't have it set up well. I have a really hard time in our kitchen the way that it is right now. It's a very small kitchen. There's not a lot of space in there and we're still working it out. So we have a plan to set it up, but for now, when I need to help prepare something or chop something, I sit on our couch and use our coffee table um, if I can't stand. Now, sometimes I will stand in the kitchen depending on where my back's at or um, where things like that are, are at. But if I have to do an extended amount of work, I will sit at our coffee table on our couch and I will do the prep work and then my husband will do the rest of his part. So. Set up your space for success. What I mean also by tools, cheats, accessibility resources is find things that help you. Join a membership like the Soul Cadence Coaching where you're going to have recipes at your disposal, support. You're going to have people there who have ideas of how to make painting easier on your hands or what you can use while you knit so that your hands don't hurt as much or... Um, the best chairs to sit in when you're filming for long periods of time, whatever it is, join a group like that. Find some people on Facebook, but find these resources too. So for me, I have these compression gloves that I wear. I actually should be wearing them now, but I'm, I'm not, but I have these compression gloves. Actually, I will put this one on because I have been really sore. Actually, I should be wearing my wrist brace today, but I'm not, um, because I've been having trouble with my wrist, but I have these gloves, they're compression gloves and they help alleviate some of the pain in my hands. And I do have a wrist brace for those really hard times. I have an elbow brace for depending. So utilize those when I'm teaching for all day Friday, I heat up my rice bag so that I can put it on my back because whether I'm sitting in the desk chair or working from bed, I have I get back problems. And so utilize the things that are going to make it easier for you to do the work that you want to do, whether it's in your nine to five job, running a business, doing a hobby. And then when it comes to cheats, you can find people that give, um, that give tools, that give recommendations, that give, um, shortcuts to getting things done and utilize those utilize those ideas so that you're getting the most out of your time and energy so for example i will be homeschooling let me see if i can find what i'm trying to show you guys i will be homeschooling and i already want to start getting my daughter used to some some stuff. So we're not doing heavy duty because she's only two and a half, but I created this and this is actually going to be something that I will be selling. It's a resource I'll be selling, but I created coloring pages with introductions to letters, numbers, things, simple things she already knows. So apple, ball, cat, car, 
I guess not cat, car, um, dog, and they all have different numbers from one to nine. Um, so I created these, I did them all by hand and I have them, they're going to be available and they're easy. I can literally do right now we're doing like one a week. Um, and so what I can do is pull out one of the coloring sheets, give it to her. We can go over a apple one, and then she just colors it in. We color together. We sit on the couch. It's easy. So she's learning something. We're not just necessarily watching TV and I didn't have to get off the couch. Now making this obviously took some energy. I had to utilize one of those energy bursts we talked about. Actually a few, I made this over the span of a few times, um, because it's 26 letters. It's a lot, but I did it. Um, the same with different, um, activities that I created. So we have a numbers matching game, memory game that I created, um, number. So letters and numbers matching game, some shapes. I have, what else? I will be making um, a couple more things. I just haven't done it yet. And then all of these are for sale that people can buy, print out, and cut out with a paper cutter or scissors, whatever they want to do. So those are the kinds of cheats I'm talking about. If you want to have an easy, low-key activity, go find printables like these ones, like the ones that I've created. They're not available yet, but they will be. But other people have printables like this available. Go get some. Go get some printables. And, oh, this is the other one I was looking for. It is just an animal sound match game. So go get printables. Cut them with a paper cutter. And then you have cheats for teaching your kids basic skills. And you can do it at your coffee table. You can sit down on the floor with them and just utilize these. They're easy to do. They're not heavy. And it's something that'll keep your kids entertained. My, my daughter loves them. My son loves to try to eat them. But that's what I mean by cheats and accessibility. You can do the same thing for yourself. Um, just finding those resources that make it easier. So now we're on the last one, number six. So number one was um, shift your expectations. Number two, have a plan. Number or number two was know your limits. Number three was have a plan. Number four, take advantage of your energy burst, but do it wisely. Number five, take advantage of cheats, tools, and accessibility resources. And number six is lots of grace. This one is super important and I can't emphasize it enough. You have to give yourself grace. When we feel all the time like we are a burden to those around us, when we are um, comparing ourselves to others, when we had this idea of what our identity was and all of a sudden it is shifting and we just think of ourselves, I want to be this certain way, we have to give ourselves grace. But we also need to recognize honest grace. We need to know what the truth is. When we compare ourselves to others, sometimes we lose sight of what the truth of ourselves actually is. For example, over the last couple of weeks, I've been getting in my head a lot. I've been struggling with comparing myself to other people across the internet, whether it be on YouTube, other blogs, Instagram, Facebook, it doesn't matter. My brain was going a mile a minute. I can't do what this person does. I'm not traveling the world. I am I'm on the couch while my kids are playing and we color coloring pages and I don't have energy to chase them around sometimes. And, you know, we had a heat wave and I became a heat monster and I fell short in business, in family, all the areas. And so these lies creep in. We got, we get caught up in these lies and this identity and comparison, which I'm going to have a longer video on that, a standalone coming soon. And it's probably going to be a draw with me chat with me. Um, but it might be like this. I don't know yet, but that's coming. But we get these lies and we tell ourselves things that we want to be like, for me, I want to be a good mom. I want to be an author. I want to be a minister. I want to be a good educator. I want to be X, Y, Z, fill in the blank for you, whatever it is. But what I realized is a lot of the times, the things that we keep telling ourselves we want to be, we already are. So to me, it's almost harkens back to in the Bible where like, 
the enemy was like, hey, Eve, do you want to be like God? And like she just completely spaced on the fact that she was already created in the image of God. Like God already like like she was already there. She already had this good life. Like everything was great. And that's not to say that everything is great for us because we know it's not. We know things are tough, right? But we get this idea that we want to be these things and usually we already are. So if I take a look at this, if I look at that list I gave you about me and you look at the list that you made for yourself, I'm already a good mom. I don't feel like it a lot of the time, but when I assess it, when I really think about it, when I listen to what my husband says, when I listen to what my mother says, I recognize I am a good mom. I want to be an author. Well, I am an author. I have published books. I write a blog. I am an author. I'm already there. I don't need to do any more than just show up where I already am. And I want to be a minister. Well, I've been in ministry for my entire adult life and actually even before that because I was in ministry when I was in high school. I have been in ministry. I do ministry. I live ministry that's already there. And I want to be a good educator. Well, I have reviews upon reviews on my online teaching that say that I am. And I have people outside sources from my adult career that have said I am a good educator, that I'm doing something that I'm good at. So we need grace for ourselves. If we are going to get the most out of our creativity, if we're going to run businesses or really feel secure in our nine to fives, in in our families, in our motherhood, if we're going to feel secure in these things, in our chronic illnesses, we have to have grace for ourselves. We have to have grace for the flare ups. We have to have honest grace that tells us what we truly are, who we truly are, and the fact that our chronic illness doesn't change that. It might change how that looks. It might change our expectations of that, but it doesn't change our core. And we have to have grace that reminds us that we have value simply by existing, simply by being who we are. We have value. The world might tell us otherwise. We might not see the world as an accessible place for those of us with disability and chronic illness, but we have value. We have a voice and we have a right to speak. And that starts with speaking up to ourselves for ourselves. So grace, a lot of grace for ourselves and grace for others because they will mirror it back for us. And that's something I struggle with grace for myself, grace for others, but they'll mirror it back to us. And as they learn, they'll grow in grace with us. So to recap, how do we get the most of our creativity and run businesses or ministries or have hobbies or live a fulfilled life? when we have chronic illness or when we're a mom with chronic illness and we just are trying to survive. Well, we shift our expectations, know our limits, have a plan, take advantage of energy burst wisely, use tools, cheats, and accessibility resources, and lots and lots of grace. So, that's all I have for you today with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to talk more about motherhood and fulfillment and chronic illness, this is the channel for you. Please come back again. Hit the subscribe and like if you want to. Um, and come back and see us. We're gonna. There's going to be a lot of stuff about writing too. So if you're a fellow Spoonie author or you're a fellow author um, with chronic illness, especially a mom, this is a good place for you to be. And we're going to talk a lot about writing, um, a lot about art, because those are two things that I love. And we're going to talk a lot about running businesses and ministries and how we live these fulfilled lives as moms with chronic illness. So with that, I do hope to see you again soon. If this is for you, please like and subscribe. And I wish you all a very happy day. Bye, everybody.